All right, YouTube, as you see from the title and thumbnail, this video is gonna be seven tips for beginners switching to keyboard and mouse. The first tip is to utilize your side mouse buttons for important action. Me personally, I have two side mouse buttons. The bottom one is for my stair bind, the top one is for my wall bind. In Fortnite, there are four total building binds, and building binds are the most important binds in the game. So I took two building binds and I put them on my mouse. So as a beginner to keyboard and mouse, only having to worry about two building binds on your keyboard, it makes it easier to get the hang of it. I'm not saying you can't get good with all four building binds on your keyboard, but it's gonna take longer for you to get used to it. You're gonna overwork your keyboard hand, and you're gonna get very frustrated in the first few weeks. On my keyboard, all I have to worry about is my cone bond, which is left shift, I click that with my pinky, and my floor bond, which is Q, I click that with my ring finger, so that leaves my middle finger, my index finger, and my thumb all free to click binds on my keyboard. If you want, you can copy me, and you can put your wall bond and your stair bond on your two side mouse buttons, or you can put wall and cone, or floor and stair, it's all up to you. Or you can even put your wall bond and your shotgun bond, or your stair bond and your pickaxe bond. Just make sure you're using important binds for your side mouse buttons. Don't use your reload bind or your Q bind because those binds are useless. I know this isn't a side mouse button, but I put my shotgun bind as my scroll wheel up. I don't recommend you use scroll wheel pickup. For your scroll wheel up, use your shotgun like me if you struggle to pull out your shotgun. Or if you have your shotgun bind on your side mouse button, or if you want to be a pickaxe editor, you can put your scroll wheel up as a pickaxe. On week one, I could do a peanut butter edit, but I couldn't pull out my shotgun. So after I change my shotgun bind to scroll up, I'll do a peanut butter edit, pull out my shotgun, and then hit a 200 pump. Scroll up is very beginner friendly. Once again, don't use no useless binds for your scroll up, because scroll up is a very important bind. The second tip is to copy a pro sensitivity. As someone who's just switching to keyboard and mouse, you're going to have no idea what sensitivity is good and what sensitivity is bad. So copying a pro sensitivity is a good blueprint and a good way to start off. And if you're looking to copy a pro sensitivity, make sure you're on the same DPI as them. DPI is your mouse sensitivity and if you're on 800 DPI, try to copy someone's sensitivity that's on 1600 DPI, it's just not going to work out. 1600 DPI is very fast, so you're gonna have a slower Fortnite sensitivity. 800 DPI is much slower, so you're gonna have a faster Fortnite sensitivity. So you see how things can get messed up? Only copy pro sensitivity that's on the same DPI as you, or the pro you're trying to copy, find out what DPI they play on, switch to that, and then copy their sensitivity. To find the pro's DPI, go to their Twitch chat and write exclamation mark sense or exclamation mark DPI or go to their settings video on YouTube. It should be in the video, the description, or the comment section. If the pro sensitivity is too fast, turn it down. If it's too slow, turn it up until you get the perfect sensitivity for you. And if you're struggling with your aim, turn down your sensitivity. You could also copy a pro's binds, and let's say the pickaxe bond feels uncomfortable, you could look at what another pro uses for their pickaxe bond, and you could try that out. Tip number three is to upgrade your equipment. If your mouse has no side mouse buttons, go out and buy a mouse with two side mouse buttons. It'll change your game for the better. If you're using a mouse that came with your Pupo PC, for example, if you go out and buy a better gaming mouse, that mouse is going to be more light, so it's going to help your aim and your mechanics. I like the mice that come with an app so I can change the DPI in the app. I don't like relying on a button or a color to know what DPI I'm on, and if I accidentally click that button, it doesn't matter because I changed my DPI in the app. And a better gaming keyboard, if you get a 60% keyboard, it makes it easier to hit your bind. 60% keyboards also gives you more mouse space. And a better gaming keyboard is also more responsive and faster, which will help with your building and your editing. A good quality mouse pad is good too, so it can have good glide, so it can improve your aim, and so it can smooth out your mechanics. The fourth tip is to make sure you're using scroll wheel reset. 
Google reset is broken and OP, and it's one of the main reasons I switched to keyboard and mouse. All it is, is instead of pressing two to three buttons to reset your build, you just have to scroll the scroll wheel down, and it will reset your build. It's much faster and easier. All the pros use it, and it's one of those things that keyboard and mouse has over a controller, and that's why controller players aren't good box fighters. For those that don't have scroll wheel reset on, I have a picture on the screen of my binds. On your building edit bind, you want to put your mouse wheel down, and for your reset building edit bind, you also want to put your mouse wheel down. And that's how you get scroll wheel reset. I only put this tip in my video because I saw a few comments in my videos of people like they use scroll wheel up for their shotgun and scroll wheel down for their SMG or AR. In my head, I'm like, where's your scroll wheel reset? Tip number five is don't switch back to controller. I know it's frustrating dying to players that you were better than on controller. And I know it's annoying that you lost all your building and editing skills. But switching back to controller is going to hinder your progression and it's going to mess up your muscle memory. I haven't touched my controller since I switched to keyboard and mouse and that's the reason I'm the skill level I am in only 14 weeks. You may be discouraged in the first few weeks, but I promise you the end goal is worth it. Don't give up. Tip number six is start playing against real players early on. On day three, I was already playing one-on-one -on -one box fights. If you don't believe me, you can go to my one week keyboard and mouse progression video. The proof is there. Don't be scared to play against real players. They're going to get you better. They're going to pressure you and force you to improve. So if you stay in a creative island by yourself for two, three, four weeks practicing moves, there's no pressure so you're able to do the moves. But once you play against a real player, there's going to be pressure and you're not going to be able to do those moves. So it's better if you just play against players early on so you can get used to the pressure. Like if you play against a player and he keeps taking your wall, you're just not going to sit there and die. You're going to try to flip the cone, edit up the side, edit up the back. Even if you mess up the edit and die, that pressure is going to get you better. The seventh tip is to slant your keyboard. Don't play with your keyboard straight like you're in an office. I'm going to show a picture on the screen on how I used to slant my keyboard. And now I'm going to show a picture on the screen on how I slant my keyboard now. I like how I slant my keyboard now. The way I slanted my keyboard before, it would hurt my wrist after a few hours of playing. But try it both ways and see which one you like more. Slanting your keyboard makes it easier for you to hit your binds. It gives you more mouse space. And all the pros slant their keyboard, so there's a reason why they do it. That's it for me. Like up the video, comment if you have any questions, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a future upload. I'll holla at ya. Peace.